Welcome to Fact, Fiction and Flights, VV's educational series on advertising, performance and optimization topics. In today's episode, we're going to be diving into the important role the Interactive Advertising Bureau, or the IAB, plays in our industry in fostering partnership to create standards on a very important topic, attention measurement. In today's episode, we're joined by Angelina Ang. Ang, can you tell us a little bit about your extensive experience in the industry? I've been in the industry for 30 years now, pretty much on the dot back. I started in March of 1994 at this small agency called Young and Rubicam. Before the internet actually became the internet, uh, as we know it today, I, I was working as an account manager. Uh, and then when the first ads were appearing, I, I moved over into media planning and buying. Went through several different agencies, really focused on media planning and buying, became a media lead, and then uh, got into ad operations over at Cara, which then became Dentsu, and oversaw ad operations, went to Merkle, uh, oversaw data platforms and ad operations, then did a, uh, a few years over at Morgan Stanley to run their analytics practice for their corporate firm wide. And then now I'm here at the IAB as a vice president of the media, a measurement adjustability and data center, also known as the MAD Center, <laughs> um, and, uh, and having a blast. Your experience even be before joining the IAB was I think is so critical in, in all the insights and, and recommendations you bring into the IAB. So we're really happy to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Can you tell me a little bit about the difference between an IAB task force and an IAB working group? Great question. Uh, I, get, I get asked this a lot. IAB working groups is typically what we're known for, are open to all our members. IAB is a member-based organization where companies pay, um, you know, pay a fee to, to join and participate in all our groups and activities and get discounts. We also recognize there are, there are some companies out there or a lot of companies out there that either are not able to participate due to various different reasons, but we still would love to have them come to the table, provide their perspective, uh, and ensure that we have proper representation from all sides of the ecosystem. So task force are open to non-members. They can join any time. Um, and there's no commitment. Understood. Thank you for that clarification. DV is a core participant in the Attention Task Force. Uh, we're joined by multiple people from across the industry. There's representation from brands, publishers, ad agencies, and other providers. Yep. And I'm really excited in today's session to kind of uh, uh, jump into some of the insights and the discussions we've been having at the task force. So Ange, before we get started, and because we really like to have some fun with our education, we're going to pair each question with a soda drink. Uh, and we're gonna start with a blood orange soda uh, sample. I'd love to uh, have you take a sip and get your thoughts on it. Cheers. Cheers. All right. It smells good. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's pretty good. That is. Kind of almost like a wine cooler. I know, exactly. But it's without actually, the alcohol. <laughs> right. I mean, it's not as sugary as I thought it was going to be, so that's pretty good. It is fruity. It is fruity, yes. It has a nice aroma. I know, <laughs> I know. So with that, let's get on our, with our first question. Is this fact or is it fiction? There is going to be only one clear methodology to measure attention. I wish there would be one methodology. But I, I, I highly doubt that we will have one approach to measuring attention. So it's total fiction. <laughs> um, there, you know, at, when we when we formed the attention task force, and you know, there was there's several solution providers out there, as as you know, mm -hmm. right? Competition or the landscape is getting broader, yep. and but we see that there's um, three main categories. I'll put biometric and neurological kind of in the same category. Mm -hmm. That's that the concept is having someone either uh, eye tracking or using some sort of device hooked on the person or monitoring the person. Uh, things like heart rate, blood pressure, brain waves, gamma waves, activity, brain activity. Then you have device signals or data proxy signals um, uh, as it's also known by, which are signals that are being transmitted by the device right. or, uh, or 
information that is being passed through from the publisher. And then the third category is cognitive. That's your standard brand effectiveness, ad effectiveness, studies or focus groups or, or panels and right. surveys. Yeah. You know, at DV, our goal is to help our clients uh, get closer to their uh, important business outcomes that they care about. And one way we believe that they can do that is through attention. As you mentioned, there are multiple methodologies in market. Yeah. Uh, DV's approach is to leverage granular uh, impression level data uh, to help our clients uh, get uh, scalable attention insights. We uh, uh, use industry standard technologies like tags and JavaScript and OMSDK, for example, to uh, collect that data uh, at scale. So basically data proxy signals. That's right. But also there are environments that don't really support these technologies in a, in a comprehensive way. Right. So we've seen a lot of value in building partnerships with other uh, companies where we can uh, combine their data with ours to provide the most comprehensive measurement and valuable measurement to our advertisers. One example is uh, a, a partnership we've built with T-Vision, who is a, uh, an eye-tracking uh, measurement company uh, focused on providing uh, and identifying users' presence uh, and eyes on screen uh, for CTV environments. And by combining that data with our own data, uh, we've been able to provide more comprehensive attention measurement to our client. That's just one example of how bringing different methodologies and different technologies together can provide value to clients. I love that because, you know, in, in over the years, what you've seen is different technology companies come in and out and very much very focused on selling their own product and services and kind of butting heads with their competition. What we're seeing here in the Intention Task Force is, I, I think it's opened up doors and partnerships where Everyone is now understanding that there are different roles in atten measuring attention from all these various providers. And seeing those partnerships is actually quite, uh, quite interesting to see because not every partner or not every solution is a solve for a brand or for a publisher. And so there are different needs, different requirements, different ways of thinking about attention, even within the same category, like right. data proxy signals. You have some companies that are focused more on the creative, others that are focused on more on the environment, right. others that are focused more on user related, and then there's others that are kind of like across all three. And by combining cognitive, data proxies, and bio and neurological, enables brands and publishers to get a better idea of what is being atten what what is getting attention and what is not. Right. I think this is a great segue to our next question, but before that, I think we need to have another drink. All right. So for our next pairing, uh, we have a tangerine flavored soda. Ooh. Cheers. Cheers. Let's see how that okay. tastes. Hmm. It's interesting. Kind of like the, a mimosa without the alcohol. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I feel like I, I like the uh, blood orange a little bit more. I do too, but I do see that with this one, I, I, I would have it during brunch. Right. Like at a restaurant or a diner. Pair it with food. Yeah. And then yeah. this one, I, would, I think I would prefer sitting in the backyard with my husband, oh, just nice. kind of hanging out. So for our uh, next question, uh, fact or fiction? Attention is a complex concept that requires the evaluation of multiple data signals to really measure the effectiveness of an ad. Absolutely fact. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are several different approaches to measuring attention with different solution providers, each of them collecting their own version of data signals and processing and developing indexes and scores. Within the group at the task force, we tried to figure one of the things that we talked about is how do we actually approach or look at approaching measurement. And so we categorized kind of two main buckets, ad related, uh, as well as ad quality. Mm -hmm. And then the second was around user related. Mm -hmm. uh, so much more focused on 
engagement and interaction. But there is a third category that we couldn't quite really determine if it should be its own category sure. or if it was a subset of the other two, which sure. is around environment. Yeah. DV, when it comes to attention, we look at both um, ad-related signals, which we call ad exposure, and user-related signals, which we call user engagement. And then we combine them together and come up with an overall uh, attention score uh, that, that is an index. To your point about the complexity, uh, it really depends on the use case and what the brand is trying to achieve. We've realized that uh, you know, clients that really care about upper funnel metrics uh, saw uh, a strong correlation between DV's uh, ad exposure signals and uh, branding KPIs. While brands that really care about direct response or, or lower funnel uh, metrics, so more of a correlation with uh, user engagement metrics. I want to go back a little bit. You, you talked about the environment, uh, which uh, sounds really important. Can you uh, drill a little bit into why you think that's important? How do you see it being a factor? Environment really falls into, can cover lots of different things. It could be the content that a user is on or are looking at. So it could be a, an entertainment site or a news site and users are engaging and interacting uh, with ads differently yeah. and have a different mindset yeah. when they're in those environments. News sites, they're, they're, they're focused on the actual words and the content that's on the page uh, versus in on an entertainment site, mm -hmm. they're really leaned into what's on screen, especially yeah. with sight, sound, and motion. But when you're, when, when you're talking about devices yeah. themselves, which is another form of environment, how a user interacts, especially, and, and different from demo, different from different cohorts, um, how they interact on a mobile device in those environments is different from how they're interacting with uh, that same piece of content on a desktop uh, or a laptop. Sure. That makes a lot of sense, and I would even add into that that it's really important for a brand uh, looking at the environment to also measure media quality and look at things like brand suitability and contextual alignment to make sure that their advertising is aligned with uh, their brand settings and the campaign goals that they set, they set forth for. I think media quality is an absolutely important, uh, important component to look at especially around where you want to continue to run your ads and mm -hmm. how, where you want to optimize uh, uh, in terms of your budgets. However, there is a role and a responsibility that the brand also has, right. and that's around their creative, making sure that that ad is engaging, uh, that there is a strong call to action, uh, and that there is enough branding in there to mm -hmm. actually identify yeah. that brand. Creative plays a really big role, uh, and I think also the ability to measure attention at the creative level becomes really important because you, you can't, it's a, it's a very critical component to the success of how an ad uh, yeah. you know, performs. So for the last drink, we have a lemon flavored soda. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, that's mm. strong. That is really strong. That's almost like a whole lemon. That's really interesting, <laughs> yes. Let's go to our final question. Okay. So fact or fiction, uh, there are several factors that a brand should consider uh, when they want to start measuring attention. Another definite fact, I think that for each brand, the way that they're going to look at attention is going to be very different from another brand, as well as within from one campaign to the next. As we mentioned earlier, creative plays a very significant role in it, and right. so you need to look at the creative itself, and do you want to measure attention the same way for each of those different assets? But there's also important to understand, again, environment, where those ads are being placed, who's actually seeing those ads, is it going to be different from different audience segments or different cohorts, uh, as well as the when we're, when we're talking about the creative, the content that it's in. So everything right. that we talked about are all different factors, yeah. but it, it does vary from brand to brand, and it might even vary from publisher to publisher right. within the, uh, the, the campaign itself. Right. Especially for, for brands that are just starting with, with attention as a, as a measurement, 
uh, I think it's really important for them to kind of uh, get into some sort of a best practice approach mm -hmm. um, and take their time through it. We've had experience with clients who are kind of going through a process of like crawl, walk, run. I think what I like about what we're doing also at the Attention Task Force is we're going to be providing some questions uh, that brands can start using uh, when they're identifying who to work with and how to leverage attention uh, as, as a proxy for performance measurement. Uh, but I also think that it's not only about measurement. I think brands should also think about how they can leverage attention uh, for activation. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing our clients are experimenting with a lot recently is how to use dynamic uh, AI activation programmatically to optimize attention and meet the outcomes that they're looking for. So I think that's also something to, to keep in mind. I'm really um, proud of what we're going to be producing because it it will be, it, it's, not a, it's not a massive document, so it's a few pages where yeah. uh, brands and publishers can take a look at this, show it to their executives, yeah. and it provides a, a really great overview of how attention measurement works. Sure. Yeah. I think a lot of clients are also looking for transparency, mm -hmm. and this is where as we're entering into a privacy by design era, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. brands, publishers are looking for clarity on what data is being collected, uh, who data is being shared with, and how companies are processing that data. But at the same time, I do think that, there, that companies like yours and all the attention providers, mm -hmm. uh, it's important that your intellectual property is also being protected, but being able to get MRC accreditation mm -hmm. and validating the the way that you're collecting that data, how you're processing that data, um, and making sure that you have the right checks and balances yeah. in place. Thank you, Anzer. I'm so glad you brought up transparency because I do think it's a really important component. I mean, that's one reason why we pursued MRC accreditation for our attention Kudos. solution <laughs> really early on. We've received it, uh, but uh, you know, it it provides a big uh, confidence boost to our clients to know that you know our measurement our methodology the way we collect the data our attention metrics uh, have been uh, you know looked at by an independent industry leading third party like the MRC uh, and made sure that everything is should be done in the right way uh, and just gives them the confidence to run campaigns with us so Ange, before we uh, close out uh, the, this episode, I wanted to know if there's anything you'd like to share with me and the viewers about what the IAB is doing in the next two to three months. In the next two to three months, we'll be releasing these explainers. So the first one being uh, the one around data processing si signals, uh -huh. and then followed by hopefully very quickly the neurological and biometric. But starting in Q3, we'll be engaging with the MRC on developing an actual guideline, yeah. a measurement guideline for attention yeah. for the marketplace so that companies can begin to also get certified or accredited for attention measurement. Yeah. Into next year, yeah. is developing some sort of playbook yeah. to help companies as they're thinking about the different types of campaigns and the different funnels, how attention fits in. And thank you so much for all the work that you're spearheading with, uh, with the attention task force. There's a lot of really important things that we need to do, uh, especially with attention being new and a lot of people wanting to try it. Uh, so I really appreciate all, all the work that you're helping this industry move forward with. Heather. Well, thank you for your participation and your contribution. And thank you to all the different members that are actually part of the Attention Task Force as well. I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Thank you. I have a confession to make, by the way. Uh huh. I told okay. you that was the last question, but I actually lied. There's one more question. Okay. Uh, and it's a very important question. Oh, no. Uh, I would like <laughs> to know, out of all the sodas you tried, which one was your favorite and why? I'm going to say, what, what was this in the, the blood orange one? It is, yeah. I, I do like the blood orange one. It's not too strong. It's a little, it's fruity, but not too fruity. Yes. And, and, I like, and as I mentioned earlier, I like sitting in the backyard with my husband. I so. agree. I agree <laughs> with you. I think this is my favorite, too. For the next time we meet on the backyard. Cheers. All right. Cheers. cheers. So, Ange, thanks again for joining us for this episode. Uh, for everyone who's watching us, please subscribe to DV's YouTube channel uh, and go to our website 
to learn how you can start with attention measurement.